Hi, this is Sally Morgan, physical therapist, craniosacral therapist, and Tellington T Touch practitioner for animals and people. And this is Tristan, he's a corgi, and we are, whoa, we are having trouble today getting you to be able to see Tristan. There we go. We are back from our whirlwind trip to New Jersey where we um, had a Tellington T Touch class where we had to move the venue at the last minute to my sister's house. So we worked with a bunch of the dogs there. Really good improvements we saw in gait and uh, posture and straightness in some of the dogs. And then we went out to the farm where her horse is to work on her horse. And the, we had to walk a long way out into the pasture. Um, but he is struggling with EPM. So it was nice to be able to offer some tea touch for him and to help him uh, really understand what's going on with his hind end. He's collapsing off to the left side on one of his hind legs, which for me was troublesome uh, with concern for his hock and his fetlock on that side. So we did some work on him as best we could because boy, those horses in that pasture are so friendly. They all wanted to see us and one little bay horse um, took a liking to one of the gals and he just did not want to leave her side. So that was an adventure. So we had a really great day. Um, everyone did a good job and is uh, pretty confident with T-Touch now to be able to go home and practice on their pets and the humans in their lives. So today we are going to talk more about the emotion code. And <clears throat> this is something I do long distance generally for animals. And I talked about it a little bit when we were talking about kinesiology and muscle testing, because that is the way you are able to ask animals questions um, to be able to do the emotion code work. And what emotion code is, is a simple but powerful way to release trapped emotions from the body. So one of the examples we give in craniosacral work um, is this idea of um, an onion. A person is like layers and layers of an onion spiraling around and then over the course of your lifetime you get little oops boo-boos along the way which are little X's in this circular layers of onion and each of those incidences which could be as dramatic as a car accident or as simple as some of the examples I'll give you create a situation where you could have holding <coughs> excuse me in your body and so, um, for instance, if you are in fifth, seventh, eighth grade and you have to go to the school dance, oh, I need some water, and, and uh, you go and you're not having a good time and people aren't talking to you and you don't know how to dance and then when someone asks you to dance, you don't want to because you're so insecure about your dancing, <coughs> this creates a whole drama for you. And that position you're standing in at the side of the room or sitting in a chair where Tristan <laughs> stay here where you are you know kind of collapsed and looking inward that body posture stays in you along with the emotional trauma that you're suffering during something so simple as that another example is you pick up the phone one day and it's uh, some bad news of whatever kind minimal or dramatic and again that posture of oh you know when you're answering the phone stays in your body along with the emotions that go along with that so in cranial work we have many ways to release those emotions as we're releasing the trapped position of the body but often emotions can be trapped in the body in other ways too uh, for instance you could have ancestors who had significant emotional trauma or um, emotional issues, for instance, continuous anger. Maybe someone in your history was an alcoholic. And the same for our dogs. Maybe their prior ancestors have all been strays. Maybe all of them have been abused. Maybe all of them have really suffered. And so when you finally adopt your little seven-month-old dog from the shelter, all of this history is built up in this dog, and it's not just what's going on with your dog. So the body tissues hold these trapped emotions over time and sure your dog now will be living in a happy healthy home and doing really well and you know adjusting to his new life with you but in his DNA is still this idea of oh I have to get away oh that loud noise is frightening oh I have to hide 
oh, I don't want to get near this big dog. So all that stuff stays in your dog just as it would stay in you. And not all traumatic events result in trapped emotions. Um, you can be off balance in other ways when the trapped emotion occurs. Uh, for instance, um, Tristan has had some trapped emotions left from when he was neutered. And that can be a big issue for a lot of pets because of the way that is done in many clinics. It's a pretty simple operation and people are pretty quick and there's not a lot of time and thoughtfulness and respect during those surgeries and all of that can uh, cause a traumatic situation for your dog and thank god when i went to the festival yesterday with my mom to walk around town and they're having this big harvest kind of craft festival we saw so many unneutered male dogs very well cared for very well maintained very well managed with other dogs around them and you know people would say that's a bad thing because we have been trying for years to spay and neuter to cut down on feral dog populations and lost dogs and stray dogs and unwanted dogs but on the other hand if the dog is well cared for and well maintained and not used for breeding um, leaving them intact can actually really improve their lifespan and their health especially some of these were big breed dogs like great danes so anyway getting back to trapped emotions um, if your dog uh, has been spay or neutered there could be trapped emotions from that which would be a dramatic situation any negative emotion you've experienced in your life even from long ago can create a problem in subtle and possibly even damaging ways it could be maybe you didn't know this yet maybe you don't know how to train a dog maybe it's your first dog but for instance tristan is very sensitive super sensitive more than most dogs I've had biscuits and um, if I were to scold him loudly and kind of hysterically if he had an accident in the house when he was a puppy this could really scar him and honestly if I just yell no loudly that traumatizes him so you have to be really careful when you're working with your dogs to decide and figure out what they need and what works for you but these trapped emotions in him from me just yelling no at him really make him a little bit kind of afraid of uh, failure <laughs> so i had to rewind that and do a lot of work with him in a kind way to respect him and not continue to traumatize him trapped emotions can happen when you have a wrong assumption you overreact you misinterpret a situation or the behavior of others certainly for a dog who is afraid maybe there's a super friendly big dog not even bouncy and he just really wants to meet your dog and your dog is afraid of other dogs just being in the presence of that dog whose energy is coming at him can leave trapped emotions in your dog um, trapped emotions can interfere with body functions in the organs and the tissues they can cause pain and fatigue and illness and also loss of immune function so releasing those trapped emotions can help you uh, overcome obstacles in your training with your dog in your dog's behavior and in his health and it can bring you a feeling of lightness as you release that emotional baggage that you might not even be aware that you have and <clears throat> my personal example of emotion code work that made me really impressed with this work and want to continue to do it was as i've mentioned before i was going snorkeling in hawaii with the dolphins and gosh i put the snorkel on and just about had a panic attack and i didn't really understand why and my roommate said oh don't worry we'll fix that when you go back to the room bring your snorkel so that night she did a motion code with me and discovered that the anger of one of my grandfathers was somehow trapped in me and i'm boy i didn't spend that much time with him and he certainly never yelled at me for anything that i remember but somehow releasing a little bit of his anger allowed me to breathe freely in the snorkel and so i sat there for like an hour watching tv breathing with my snorkel perfectly happy went snorkeling the next day for hours in water so deep i can't even imagine how i did it because i'm not a very good swimmer and i certainly easily get tired when i'm swimming so anyway this the trapped emotions being released really helped me a lot i mean i owed a lot of my experience all of it really to my friend working with me this way so it impressed me so much and i thought gosh let's do this with animals and in fact a few people worldwide do it with animals 
and you can find them and me on the website for emotion code. Um, <clears throat> trapped emotions usually live in a tissue that's already out of balance. So for me, my neck is a little dysfunctional from numerous falls from horses and that creates uh, disruption in my airway. And so of course those trapped emotions in my neck causing it, making it hard for me to breathe with my snorkel on um, are related to other physical traumas I've had in that area. So for instance, a lot of small dogs have that little skip to my loo when they're trotting and their stifles go out of whack. Um, and so often the emotions that are trapped will reside in an area related to that, either the spinal segment up here that's innervating that area. I know we're all coughing today or down in, we had to turn the heat on <laughs> or down in the stifle itself or further down in the leg. So releasing trapped emotions, um, you don't really work with a specific body part, but you will often see ease of movement improved in body parts after you release those trapped emotions. And you know, you can even have trapped emotions in your spine. Uh, a lot of, um, there's a great little book. Well, great depending on how you look at it. Um, Louise Hay wrote a little book called Heal Your Body. And in it, she just has a long, long list, pages and pages of everything that could be wrong with your body. And then she suggests emotions that are associated with that body part being dysfunctional. And then she also gives you a little affirmation. So for instance, if you have low back pain, you'll see what that low back pain is related to. Um, I know that the shoulders are related to struggle. And then, you know, you'll have an affirmation like, I do not need to struggle. Things come to me easily. So that book can be really helpful for people. I often use it with my clients on their first visit just to say to them, does this mean anything to you? If it does, think about it because often things are multi-layered and that's just one piece. So um, those trapped emotions can uh, result in imbalance in the tissues or dysfunction in the body. And certainly there is a large correlation between your body and your emotions and your mind. <clears throat> And then the other thing, as we learn from my work with the tuning forks and talking to you about the tuning forks, uh, because of resonance, if you have a trapped emotion in your body, you'll attract more of that trapped emotion. So for instance, if you are an angry person, you'll attract angry people around you because the, they want this frequency seeks the same frequency. So that's why it always says if, <clears throat> was it Gandhi who said, um, if you want to see a change in the world, uh, you be the change that you want to see. If you want to bring peace to the world, bring peace to the world around you. So that like attracts like, and this idea gets back to Chinese medicine as well. So it's a well-known, historic, ancient idea that like attracts like. So if you're an angry person, you will find that you have lots of angry people around you. If you're a frustrated and grumpy person, you will be surrounded by other frustrated and grumpy people. And if you are a calm and relaxed person, you will attract more calm and relaxed people to you. And that is a really important thing to know. That alone is enough to make one want to release trapped emotions from the body. And certainly for your dogs, if they are, as Tristan is, he has had some issues with other dogs in his life. I mean, he was wonderful this weekend walking around because he had my mom Schnauzer with him, who he's known since he was born and she's confident and friendly and bigger than him and he even when he couldn't see her he wasn't having any tendency to snark at other dogs so it's really important to um, remember that idea of resonance and getting your dog into balance so that he's less snarky will make the dogs around him less snarky it really was fascinating to me having been to a dog weekend the prior weekend where Tristan was really uncomfortable and snarking every dog, even the one little Cairn Terrier that he was sort of friendly with, every once in a while, every two hours, there'd be a little rah, 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 rah from both of them because they were similarly afraid of other dogs. But having that schnauzer with him made him confident and it didn't attract the snarkiness of any of the dogs around them. Even the bouncy puppies calmed down when they walked by Tristan and the schnauzer. So it's important to keep that idea in mind. You want emotional balance because it will attract emotional balance to your life and make your life so much less complicated. And the same is true for your dogs. If you have a timid dog and you attract other timid dogs, timid dogs are often fearful and afraid and um, 
will be quite barky and bouncy at the end of their leash sometimes if they get near other dogs that are also afraid because that tension builds up and then both dogs sort of explode. And the best example I have of that is a dog I've been working with here who's pretty darn reactive with other dogs. And what I learned by controlling that situation um, with him and a stuffed dog is that he is terrified of other dogs. He was on the street for a long time before this woman adopted him, like over a year, and then he was in a shelter. And who knows what happened to him during that time, but he is scared to death of other dogs. And he first tries to hide behind his owner and then he starts leaping and lunging and is just like out of his body. He is not able to understand anything that's going on, but he is terrified of that other dog. He's not trying to attack it and kill it. He's trying to get away. So we're working with him. He will get better. We haven't done emotion code with him. We might have to do that. So as emotional beings, animals can have trapped emotions as well, just like people do. And they can have trapped emotions from their interactions with other animals or from stressful events, trauma, or interacting with us. As I said, I over scolded Tristan when he was a puppy. Um, and he was afraid of me for like four days. I had to really help him with that. So when those trapped emotions are released, the effect is immediate and profound and long lasting. So um, I'll just show you a little bit more about emotion code because we're going to talk tomorrow or whenever, I think it's Tuesday when I'm back, um, about heart walls and about the specifics of emotion code. But what we have to release here when we do this work is a little chart and it's <clears throat> two columns. This is just this, the directions. We have two columns, A and B, and then in each of these blocks, there are five emotions. And so we ask the dog or the person a series of questions to determine if their issue is in column A or B, if it's an odd or an even number in the rows, and then we ask if it's which emotion it is in each box. And that way, it's a pretty simple uh, way by process of elimination to get to a specific. Sure, I could sit there and ask a hundred questions and probably find that emotion sooner or later, but by having this grid, it makes it a lot more straightforward and easy to do. So emotion code work can be really, really helpful for a dog that's struggling with any kind of issues. I have a dog now that I'm just starting to work with who has profound separation anxiety. Um, and again, another situation where a senior dog passed away, big, protective, Great Dane, and this other smaller dog is left home alone now and she is really struggling and uh, so is her person. So that dog certainly needs some emotion code work to help her release all of the complex emotions around losing the big dog and losing her owner when she leaves, another dog that was feral for some time, and certainly her mother had been feral for a long time. So that's some of the uh, specifics about what emotion code is about. And as I said, we'll talk more about heart walls and the specifics of the work as we continue um, in our conversations with a corgi. So I will be at my job as an educator this week on Monday and Wednesday. So we'll be back on Tuesday to talk about heart walls and on Thursday to talk about more specifics about this chart <laughs> and how we do emotion code. Tristan is styling his new bow tie. Let's see if we can see it. Bisky, let's see your bow tie. It, lift your nose up a little. There we go. See that handsome purple paisley bow tie? We got that at the festival in New Jersey. If you have a female dog or you don't want a bow tie, it makes a nice little bow on the top of your dog as well. And I think we're going to be offering some of these for sale on my website. They're really great. Um, and the fellow that makes them is very nice and really loves dogs. And he has beautiful leashes and collars with really cute different designs on them. And um, I have some kind of hair bow things for dogs with longer hair, or you can clip them onto their collars that you'll also see. I, of course, bought all the blue and purple ones and some seasonal ones, but um, they're really cool. And hopefully I can offer some of these on my website because who doesn't want to dress their dog up? One of the cool things about this one is that it has two Velcros on each of the bow sides so that it holds the bow tie up. A lot of the ones I have have littler bow ties on them and they just have one Velcro in the middle and then your bow tie gets a little droopy. Right Tristan? Do you want a droopy bow tie? 
So thanks for joining us today and we talked today about the emotion code and I am about to become crazy busy trying to prepare for my TED talk about connecting with animals and once I have that written I'll feel a lot better because it is coming up in just a month and a week and <clears throat> I've had to do a lot of revision um, and a lot of rethinking so hopefully I can get a good working draft of that done in the next couple of days but it's really challenging to make a TED talk. I can tell you that they are very specific about what they want and require to keep it consistent, which of course makes sense. So, and of course it'll be available on YouTube once I do it in November. So thanks for joining us today. Have a great day. It's cloudy here in New England. Seasonably fallish at 65, but going back into the seventies and I'm not complaining. I like the nice weather. So do you, Tristan. More time in the yard. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you on Tuesday.